Thank you for tuning in to the Student Organization Summit. Make sure to follow us on social media and check out the many other videos on this channel about working with and advising student organizations. And now, please enjoy your workshop. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning into our session, the evolution of leadership training, why and how we transition to a new online program, where we will be discussing the ins and outs of our new leadership program, including the development process, structure, and design of it, and how it stemmed from our adaptation to a virtual and remote reality. So it is brand new. Um, we just launched it not too long ago, so we're really excited to be here and talk to you all about it. Um, so the session will be presented by myself, Rebecca Rodas, and my colleagues, Jeanette Clay, Emily Malgosa, um, Marcos Villanueva, and our supervisor, Brian Jansen, and we are from Portland State University. So for our session agenda, we will start off with introductions so you know who we are and what we do. Then we will provide a snapshot of Portland State and a little history of leadership programming at PSU and how it has looked like up until now. Following, we will discuss the shift in our leadership training philosophy and audience um, and touch on who this program is intended for and the time investment that went into this transition. Um, then we will move into the development of the new program, including the needs assessment conducted and fiscal implications we considered. Um, and lastly, we will wrap up with an overview of the new program where we will talk about the themes we identified for the modules the technology used, um, the incentives for program completion, and then we will actually show you one of the modules. Thank you, Rebecca. So as Rebecca mentioned, um, we are from Student Activities and Leadership Programs at Portland State University. Uh, my name is Brian Jansen, and I'm the Director of Student Organization Advising. And um, our department is an, an umbrella organization. Uh, we have student operated services, which are student run businesses. We have about 180 student groups. Uh, we have student media, we have um, two service centers that focus on sustainability um, and community service, and we also house student government and Greek life. Um, so we are a large organization, um, and we have overall over a thousand student leaders who are part of student activities and leadership programs. So I just want to introduce you a little bit to our department and who we are, um, and now I'll let my co-presenters um, talk a little bit about who they are. Hello, my name is Jeanette Clay, and I am the Student Organization Advisor for Political and Academic Groups. Hi, my name is Emily Melgoza. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and I advise the arts and advocacy groups. Hi, everyone. My name is Rebecca Rodas. Like I mentioned in the beginning, um, I use she, her pronouns, and I advise the multicultural honorary pre-professional and business groups here on campus. Hello, my name is Marcos Finueva. I use he, him, his pronouns, and um, I am the advisor for the International Language and Spiritual Groups at Portland State University. Okay, awesome. So now we're gonna um, look a little bit more uh, into Portland State and what our university looks like in case you're not familiar with us. Um, we are a public institution and have over 26,000 students and that includes part-time, full-time. Um, we have transfer a large transfer student population, um, international students. Um, we offer bachelor's um, degree programs, master's programs and, doc and doctoral programs. Um, and we are primarily a um, commuter institution. Um, Portland State is located in downtown Portland um, and there's lots of great um, mass transit um, and a lot of folks utilize that to get to campus um, when we are on campus. <laughs> um, and we have, like Brian mentioned, um, over 150 student organizations. We have different categories within that. Um, so we have student fee funded groups, we have affiliate groups, and then we also have department sponsored groups that we work with. And within that we have over 800 um, student leaders. Um, we have at least three student leaders in each group, um, but they can have more than that in their group. It just depends. I have some groups that have, you know, six, seven, eight leaders. So it, it varies. 
Um, but that's a little bit more about um, Portland State. And I will hand it over to Brian next. So a little bit about how we got here. So about five years ago, um, the advising team and I were looking at where we kind of had a void in our leadership programming, and we didn't have a lot of programming for incoming first year student leaders. It's not to say they couldn't get involved in student organizations, and a lot of them did, um, but we didn't have a leadership training for those students. And so what would happen is they we either found that a lot of first year students weren't getting involved in leadership positions, or when they did eventually get involved in leadership positions that they might not have the skills necessary to um, really succeed right away in those positions. So we created a program called the Emerging Leaders Program, which was really marketed towards first year incoming students. Um, and the goal of that program was to try to introduce them to leadership at PSU, um, do a little bit of leadership exploration for themselves, and then also gain some skills within certain areas. So for the past couple of years, um, we've seen a drop off in that program. Um, the students who still attend the program um, get a lot out of it, and it was still relatively successful. We just weren't seeing um, the numbers that we had previously. So in thinking about the time investment from staff, in particular from the advisor who just introduced themselves, we were putting a lot of time and effort for um, minimal amount of return on the number of students who were in the program. And so thinking about um, transitioning to a more open, interactive online module, um, one of the considerations was um, time investment from staff. And it's ironic because we had actually talked a little bit about this prior to COVID happening. And of course, um, last March, uh, you know, COVID hit the US pretty hard and we went all remote, our institution did, was fully remote um, pretty quickly. And so we thought at this time, it would be a good idea for us to make this transition to a fully online program. Um, one of the benefits of it is it allows accessibility for a much wider audience. Students can complete it um, at their own pace and student needs are changing. And so a lot of the needs that um, we see from our students are things that maybe we weren't focusing on originally in the Emerging Leaders Program that our current student leaders are really looking for um, and are hoping to see in their leadership programming at Portland State University. So it's a little bit about how we got here. Um, making this shift from an in-person smaller program to um, a wider audience open source model um, that we hope will attract um, a lot of student leaders. So thus we made the move onto the online program, which is titled Level Up. And when we started doing that, the advising team here really looked at what our student needs and interests are, you know, what were they lacking? And what were they asking for in terms of skill development and leadership development? We then brought in that conversation to the larger department with the coordinators that are also um, part of the SALP uh, department that also work with student leadership. Next, we worked with a collaborative group of campus partners who also work with student leaders and student employees. We invited their feedback via a survey. And yes, we got a lot of feedback. We learned a lot from them. We wanted to learn what they too saw in terms of trends and needs in, tr in terms of training for student leaders and student employees. And this was also an opportunity to offer some streamlining uh, for common student leadership development and training, not only for our department, but for the entire university. So from the long list of amazing ideas that we had generated, we then worked together as a committee to narrow that down and prioritize which topics to include in the first round of Level Up, which we'll show you in a few minutes. We also set some standards um, for what each of these modules should include. We looked at sequence, outcomes, accessibility, types of quizzes for those assessments, and also variety in the modules, yet maintaining that consistency. We then each chose a topic to work on for these modules, and worked on it individually. During the build period though, we had check-in points that we could check in with each other and share feedback on the modules and make sure that we were um, sticking to that consistency yet also having variety in the module development. During the process, we looked at this and realized, you know, this is an alternative to badging. We did take into consideration the costs, the time, commitment, visibility, and incentives. And finally, we did uh, look at this Level Up program as an extension to our current orientation that we use for student leadership, uh, for student leaders in our student leadership uh, groups. So they have a, a yearly 
online orientation that they complete, which has actually uh, been reduced over the years. But this online level up program is something that can serve as an extension to that. And again, as Brian mentioned earlier, this is really an opportunity to provide a more accessible leadership and training development opportunity for our students at PSU that are very diverse and also um, our many commuter students and given the current situation where we're in, in very different locations right now. So it serves a lot of varying purposes. Um, so the actual program. Um, so after kind of going through the collaborative brainstorm process, we were able to narrow down um, and identify the seven different themes slash training areas that then led to the seven content modules that were created, like Jeanette mentioned. Each of them had um, specific learning outcomes that guided the content. I believe we settled on three to five learning outcomes to just kind of keep it short, concise, and informative, and also to just make sure that we included what we wanted students to get out of it. And so those seven modules are, and you will get to see um, the homepage um, in the next slide, but I will just introduce the seven modules, which are cultural humility, public speaking and presentation strategies, controversy slash conflict and communication styles, teamwork strategies, leading meetings and team decision making, event planning, and how to engage a group online. So all of the advisors had an opportunity to create one, and then the others were developed by other staff in our department. And so like Jeanette mentioned, it is titled Level Up as a play on video games, just to kind of keep it fun. So when exploring our technology options, we had previously discussed, like Jeanette mentioned, that we wanted to use something that allowed the modules to be interactive, engaging, and accessible. So with that in mind, we considered a few options. I know one of them that didn't make it on here because we didn't use it was D2L, which is short for Desire to Learn. It is our campus-wide platform that students use to access coursework and other class information. It is also used for trainings, but we just didn't go with that one because it didn't work with kind of like what we were going for. Um, so we didn't go with it, but I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of the different platforms that were considered. Um, before finally landing on Google Sites for a homepage and Qualtrics for the actual modules. The reason why we went with Google Sites, um, I believe, is because we, or it allows plenty of flexibility and creativity with the design. We can kind of play around with it, really make it our own, um, create, insert, create and insert images and graphics. Um, and a big bonus is that we are able to manage it and make current updates on it as opposed to going through a different department or um, a third party. And then with Qualtrics, um, it's a survey software that offers a variety of interactive tools for really presenting and structuring the content. Um, and it just has so many capabilities and features, including different formats for quizzes, exercises, and questions, um, such as multiple choice, true, false, click all that apply, ranking, and so forth. So it really fit what we were going for, um, like Jeanette had mentioned in the previous slide. Um, one thing that is really neat is that it also includes a check survey accessibility section. Um, so it tells you, it shows you a list of different formats for questions. So like descriptive text and multiple choice um, and tells you which ones are accessible and which ones are not. So that we would know, um, we wanted to make sure that we were complying with those standards. So this is also what we use for student leader orientation. Um, and it has been a smooth experience so far. And again, it just allows for that creative freedom and also for that ability for us to control um, it and make um, updates as needed to the modules. Thank you so much for elaborating on uh, the technology, technology choices that were made, Rebecca. Very thorough, I appreciate it. Um, and so there's a lot of benefits as to why we chose these mod these, um, these why we had these choices for technology with the level up program. One of which is follow up emails with resources. So there's a lot packed in to very um, what are meant to be very short and succinct modules. Uh, these modules should take students about 15 to 20 minutes to complete, even though there's a series of them. And within that time frame. There's only so much you can fit in, but there's also a lot that goes into it. Um, so each of us really worked hard to make sure that while it was to the point, 
there's a lot that can, that students can follow up with and learn about even after they take the module. So for the follow-up emails for the resources, students get an automatic email from the modules that they take um, that were designed by us on the back end to make sure that they're getting all the resources that were built into the modules that maybe they can read completely during the module that they were taking, or uh, they might have questions about afterward. So that's a really great benefit. Uh, and students can also stop and return at any time, which is something that just couldn't be done in a physical space, uh, which we had before with our previous, um, the way we previously worked with students in this, um, in this environment. So just the ability for students to be able to take a module and stop at any point, take a break, take some time to come back to it, even if a couple days later, will be very beneficial for students from all backgrounds, um, whether they have things going on personally in their lives or just academic stuff, it makes it a lot more inclusive for students to be able to, to take these modules. Um, and email to make monitoring easy for student worker. So uh, if we, instead of having employees who are full-time um, or like a more very expensive system that needs to email the students who are taking these modules, uh, you could easily have one of your student leaders or like a student employee manage this system. So very easy to manage um, at any level and it saves a lot of money that way. So um, that also goes into the local level of control and the cost. So it's important to note that unlike um, going with a system that might be more expensive that you'd have to get outside third party resources for, this can be made in house and cost little to nothing depending on how thorough you wanna be with this presentation or with this program that you'd like to develop. So really great on all ends. And completion incentives. So back in the spring, we actually had some feedback from students about incentives with leadership because a lot of students were having difficulty getting others uh, who weren't student, student leaders to engage to become student leaders and to kind of incentivize them to become a part of SALP in general. So some really great incentives for this program where students get uh, endorsed and recommend endorsements and recommendations through LinkedIn. Um, so part of what the responsibility of the student worker would be, would be to track whatever modules are completed. And once a module is complete, students will be um, able to choose if they would or opt in to whether they'd like to be endorsed um, or recommended on LinkedIn. So if they have a LinkedIn profile and they want specific skills endorsed, um, or they want the blurb that we've created for their program or for their completion of the program um, applied to their LinkedIn page, they can actually request that. And it's really great because a lot of what we chose is based on what employers are looking for. And so if an employer is looking at a LinkedIn page of a student who's taken these modules, they see that they, they've acquired the skills from a recognized department at a, um, at a university that is, um, so I think it just adds a lot to like the, the head, like the ability for them to be recognized, like their, their work to be recognized by potential employers in the future. Exclusive leadership programming. Um, so we also make sure that students have the ability to um, learn about programs that we're putting on through SELP and that students don't always have access to. So if you're a student leader, you get opportunities to network with other folks on campus. Uh, you get the ability to attend lunches and uh, expose also your student organizations to others and find ways to collaborate and meet even people across campus that you wouldn't have met before or other people from departments who might be able to hire you on campus for on campus or off campus positions. So there's a lot of really great networking benefits there. Certification of completion. So another great thing is that they get an actual certificate, which one is fun. But two is also just really great for them to have something to showcase to potential employers um, and also just to, to show that they've acquired something that they've worked hard to attain something in the end. Uh, share names with campus employers. So another thing it's along with the networking piece is that it's important for students to really make the most of their time while they're at an institution. And if they're trying to get on campus positions, not just as a student leader in a student club or organization, but also maybe they wanna be an RA or work with orientation or they want a job on campus um, 
know, one of the marketplaces or anything like that, we actually share the names of students who completed these modules to show that, they're, that they are really dedicated, that they really want to um, expand upon their leadership skills and they really want to apply themselves outside the classroom as well. And they can always add to their resume, which is just generally plus. So um, they can showcase their work and what kinds of skills they've learned about and developed with these modules to potential employers in the future. Thanks, Marcus and Rebecca. That was great. Um, I think there is a lot to the leader or the level up program um, that we were really intentional about and we were developing, um, you know, the incentive piece in particular, talking with students um, and campus partners and employers about what would be beneficial for them. So now we're going to take a look at the website uh, and we'll just go into one module very quickly just so folks can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, the QR code here, if you want to scan it with your phone, um, you're able to do that and pull it up or um, if you want to visit the um, Level Up homepage, this is the link to it. So I'll click on this, see if we can get it to pull up. So this is the Level Up homepage. Um, we have a graphic design center that's run by students in our department. So they created some cool uh, uh, customized graphics for us here. Um, it's kind of an outline of the program, program purposes, um, why student leadership matters at Portland State. And so there's some um, important things in here for students to know um, about what we believe about leadership. And um, it's not just for in-student activities, but also at Portland State University, why it matters um, and some assumptions that we hold about leaders um, at PSU. Um, the program incentives that Marcos just highlighted, um, a little step-by-step -step guide to program completion, which kind of outlines um, just what they can do um, a little bit at a time. And then down here are the actual modules themselves. So um, you can see each one has the little graphic attached to it. And then this module eight, when students complete all seven modules, um, they go into module eight and apply for their certification. So that's what this final one is. So let's just uh, start with cultural humility. I'll pull it up very quick so you all can kind of see what it looks like. So as you can see, it's uh, pretty clean. We have you know, the module agenda here, welcome to the module. And I'm just gonna go through a couple of the slides real quick. So um, each one of our modules has an agenda and module learning outcomes. Um, and we, the nice thing about using Qualtrics is um, you can kind of customize all the color palettes to um, have different um, colors per module. So each module has a little bit of a different theme. And so, Going to move forward through this real quick so we can maybe get on to something else. So I can see there's some text here, um, which is an introduction to the module. I'm just trying to get to one of the interactive pieces. So here we get to an interactive piece. And so when students click um, and unclick on these, information and graphics will appear below. So this is part of the reason why we chose. Um, Qualtrics instead of using D2L as D2L doesn't have any of these um, capabilities, including the color palettes and kind of focusing on um, the things we wanted to. So um, this is just one instance of the um, interactivity that can happen within um, the Qualtrics module. So I just wanted to show everyone real quick a little bit about what that looked like. And at the bottom, we have space for questions and links to um, our leadership page and to our um, online connect. We use a, a through Engage, um, we have PSU Connect, which is our online platform where all the student organizations have individual pages. So if students are on the um, Level Up you know, homepage and they want to learn more about student groups, they can just click here and be able to explore um, what that looks like. So um, it's going to keep that piece a little bit short and hopefully you'll go on and uh, do a little more exploration yourself. And um, as we round out the end of the presentation, um, we invite you, invite you to come to a live Q&A session uh, that will take place around 920. We'll be in the Zoom room um, taking questions. We're happy to talk about any of the things we covered today, um, transition, what that looks like, building out the program, um, or if you just want to talk to us about how our program is structured in student activities and leadership programs, um, the advising team and I will be there to discuss those things. Um, we're also happy to answer questions if you would like to email our shared email address at southorgs.pdx.edu. Uh, we'll be happy to get back in touch with you with any questions you may have. So 
Thank you for joining us today. Thank you advisors for presenting and sharing our awesome program with everybody. Uh, we hope everybody enjoys the conference and uh, hopefully we'll see some folks uh, in the live chat. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the Student Organization Summit. If you're watching this live, feel free to reference the schedule for the day and use the link in the schedule to access a Q&A room where you can ask questions or chat with the presenters from this workshop. If they didn't list a Q&A link or you're watching this video after the event, thank you for your interest in the Student Organization Summit.